Hello, we are going to talk about chapter six, uh, forecasting sales with time series uh, method. This is going to be chapter six. So chapter six uh, provide you an example, which is similar to the project. So you can see the first column is data and the second column is sales. And the third column is going to be our moving average. So the moving average, similar to our uh, project. <clears throat> okay, this is our project. It's talking about the quarterly sales data for this project. So you can copy this data and paste into your Excel spreadsheet. <clears throat> the first question is create a line chart of sales in Excel. Do you see a trend? Do you see any seasonality? Okay, let's uh, copy the data and back to this. In here. So the first column, we have these three columns data. We paste into Excel spreadsheet. Now we work on the trend. How we work on the trend? So the trend is going to be, we choose the seasonal because this is a seasonal. It's a quarter one, two, three, four, quarter three, four, and quarter one and two. So we have a four quarters. So we're gonna take the average of this sales for last year. And then we take and for next time period, another four quarters average. And we take the average of this two. So we are going to get the, the trend. So I strongly suggest you to read the textbook and we go back to the textbook. Okay, the, the textbook is going to give you the, the average. So we calculate the first one, two, three, four observation and divide by four and the second, starting from the second to the fifth. Okay, so that's the average. And then I take the average of this, this two. So we're gonna use the formula, which is called this one. Okay, average of the average of the first of four data, and then the average of the Second force data, so B3 and 6, we take the average. Okay, I'm going to show you the formula here for the trend. We create a column, it's called a trend. Okay, the trend, look at the formula here. Okay, the trend is the average of the column C2 to C5. One, two, three, four. Okay, two, three, four, five, C two, C five, and an average of C three to six. Okay, C three, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's the average of this two average, and then you drag all the way down. If you type the formula correct for D four, and then you drag all the way down, or you double click. It will give you the trend. Okay, next we're gonna calculate the raw seasonal. So remember the, the data in when we do the forecasting. We move to the next page. We wanted to isolate in the seasonality of a data series. Okay, the data series we have is three major components. Okay, 
the three major components is going to be P is the trend. So look at the second formula is a trend and S is a seasonality. And I is a irregular component. So the time series could be decomposed into three components. Okay, so you can see the irregular is the target value or the raw data divided by the time series and the seasonality. So, okay, let's apply to this formula to our data here. Okay, the raw seasonality. Raw seasonality is just a simply use C4, the actual cells divided by the trend, C4 divided by D4. Okay, so you apply that formula and you drag all the way down here. And the seasonality. The seasonality, how you get to the seasonality. So we're gonna create the quarter and the raw factors right here in this uh, column J to L. So we're gonna use that uh, function is called the weight lookup. We look for B4, so look at the B4 is right here. So this is the is one, right? The B4 is one. So we choose uh, monthly, we got different quarter, quarter based on the month they have. So they see for seasonality. Okay, we choose a B4, B4 is one. Okay, the first season. And from J2 to L5, J2 to L5 is a, the table we create eight, right? J2 to L5. A seasonality, we choose that seasonality. The raw factor is 0 0.919. Okay, and then we apply that data. It's going to be 0 point, either 0 0.919 or either point 0 0.934. If the third quarter is going to be, as you can see, the different quarter, the normalized factor will be a different number. So the first one is 0 0.919. The second quarter is going to be 0 0.934. And the third quarter is going to be 0 0.943. And the first quarter is 1.204. Okay, how we get to this uh, seasonal factors? You can go back to the the textbook. So we read this page. Okay, this page is on your textbook 184. And using that we look up function. Okay, we look up function. So we look up before and H2 to G5, which is three. So this is the formula we need. Okay, now we apply that formula, we drag all the way down here. Okay, when you drag all the way down, here we go to the seasonality. So now we can see we have all these three different components, right? What is the irregular? Remember the irregular is going to apply the function. Okay, irregular is the sales divided by trend and seasonality. So we calculate the irregular, which is C4, which is the sales, actual real sales, divided by D4 and F4. Okay, D4 is the trend, F4 is seasonality, so irregular. So now we drag. When you cross the moon to the right hand side corner, it becomes the cross. You drag all the way down. Okay, it will be the irregular. Now we can reconstruct our cells, which is we call the target quarterly cells forecasted. 
how we do that. So the constructed that is going to be the three components, which is D4, F4, and G4. Okay, D4, F4, and G4. So we times all these three different components. That will give you reconstructed cells. Okay, and now we go back to the textbook and you can see, okay, reconstructed cells is going to be this is three components, right? Three components. Now, let's graph all those uh, data. So first we wanna graph the trend. So look at this and we select this data and we insert a chart. Okay, we just insert this chart, right? Okay, and this is the trend. So you look at the trend, okay, you might come feels that, okay, why my trend is, it looks like, you know, not as the, uh, the one here. Yes, because the vertical data, you need to make some adjustment. Let's say you choose the data here. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Okay, you need to really select the data on the, uh, the x, the y axis. We'll make sure you correct. Correct. Okay, so we wanted to select the data. Okay, now we right click. Okay, it's uh, sometimes it's hard to select this data. Okay, now we double click. And then you can choose the minimum. Okay, the, you see the popping up, double click. And we wanted to choose this number a little smaller. Okay, and the maximum, let's say 300 or something. Okay, we make it that exactly. What else we did here? So now you can see the trend. Okay, it's going to be pretty close to the one we have right now. Okay, so we're using um, the minimum. Yeah, it's a one uh, 15,000, but that one is only 10,000. Okay, the trend. Okay, so we can see the trend. Okay, now we delete that graph and you can make it smaller and put it right here. Now we graph the seasonality. So we select the data here and insert. You go and check the line graph here. See the seasonality graph is right here. We got this seasonality. Um, also, we can do the irregular. Okay, you select this data and insert a line graph. Okay, this is your irregular. You can see it irregular, right? Irregular is a little bit in uh, different, but yeah, the same thing you can make adjustment on that. So you double click that, or you click, yeah. So you double click the data, and then you can make some adjustment. <clears throat> okay, so make that number. Uh, this uh, the one you got here. You can change that data and. Okay, and the last one, we're gonna go the target quarterly cells, and that's uh, your reconstruction here. The reconstruction, and you can insert a line graph, and that is your reconstruction uh, graph. So you can see this one is your reconstruction target quarterly cells. Okay, so you can see that is actually the similar graph we have right here. <clears throat> okay, now we move to the second question. Second question, fit a regression model with a time train and a seasonal dummy to the cells data in Excel. Okay, this one, 
is going to use a regression model. Okay, let's do the regression here. Okay, the second question, we're gonna do the regression. Okay, remember all this data uh, you just copied. And now we need to, uh, because this is um, a regression, so we wanted to create a time series data, which is uh, called a period. So we create one column. The period is just a one, two, three, all the way down. We count how many uh, numbers we have. We just all the way down. So what you can do is just uh, type one, and then you type two, and then you select all these two columns, and you drag all the way down. It will give you all the numbers right, until the end. Okay, now we choose uh, quarter. Okay, quarter one, you can see if this one is quarter one or not. Okay, if that is quarter one, so you put one. If that is not quarter one, it got zero. Okay, so we create the column is called quarter one. So the function is using if function. If b2, okay, this b2 equal to one, okay, equal to one, you type one, this cell is going to be one. Otherwise, put a zero. Okay, so that's three, right? Zero. Okay, that is a four, they will do zero. That is a one, and they type one. Okay. So so they can see this formula we put it there, and then you drag all the way down, and then you will get all the numbers here, okay? So you don't worry about that. So it's going to generate another column, which is called quarter two. In quarter two, you can see the formula is that if B2 is equal to two, and you type one, if that is not two, you type zero, okay? That's uh, you apply to that formula here, and move your cursor to the right hand side corner, it becomes a cross, and you drag all the way down. And then you create column three. Column three is if you look at the formula, if that B2 is a three, this cell will be typed one, otherwise going to be zero. So you, so you drag all the way down here, okay. Okay, now you can see, so this is the quarter three, quarter one, and quarter two, and quarter three. Okay, so we have one, two, three quarters. Why we didn't do the quarter four? Okay, the quarter four is going to be the one last. Okay, you just uh, 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 going to be the rest. You don't have to do that. Okay, so we're gonna do that in using the cells. Okay, there's one of the total cells as our dependent variable. And a quarter one, two, three, or well, this is three as our um, independent variable. So you can go to data and click on data analysis here. Okay, data analysis. And uh, once you got data analysis, you will see there are a lot of functions you, you can choose. You can do regression here, click on OK. And this is your Y. Your Y is your cells. Okay, this is your dependent variable. Okay, so you see you did the uh, forecasting. You don't have to have all the data, right? You're doing only until here. So because you take the average or that data is not going to uh, be there. So is that next four time period is the data you forecast. So you until 32, that's it. Okay, so now you choose the X Okay, all these three columns data are X, and then you make sure until line 32. Okay, now you should click on label because the label is the one on the very top. Okay, the first first column data is, is labeled, so you can 
work on that. You can output a new worksheet. Okay, now. Okay, so we just click on okay. Okay, the regression result or output coming out, right? So you can see the regression output we got. This is the uh, summary of the regression report. So you can see this intercept, quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three. Okay, so that's how the data or the results coming out from here. So you can see that you have the intercept and then you have, if you wanted to include the time, like a period, so you can include the time period. Okay, all those data is going to be exactly the same as this one. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Okay, let's say we do the data analysis, including other than one, two, three quarters. Also, we included period, the time trend, okay, regression. And okay, so we want to select the time trend, including the period. Now we select all those data here. Okay, make sure they have take the same number of observations. Now we click on, okay, make sure that's right. Okay, click on okay. Now we can see that's the data we got here. Okay, exactly, we got 21684, 14.6, 21684, 14.5, right? See, this is a negative, 5136. 5136, let's see exactly the result we got from here, okay? So remember, if we select all those as your independent variable, so select all those data uh, until 32, or the data right here. <clears throat> okay, so the next one is just uh, based on that formula you can do because you estimate that numbers, okay, remember? So you're going to be your estimate the number, so we want it to the fit. Okay, the fit is your intercept. Okay, this is the K17. K17 is right here. Is your intercept plus, plus, right? Plus this is the K18. So this is one, the time period, and times the period, period one, D, D2. And then the second Q1, this is a, uh, the coefficient times Q1. And the second, this Q2 coefficient times Q2 right here, zero. And the coefficient of um, Q3 times the number in Q3. That's how you get the, the fit. And then you apply that formula. Remember all those numbers from this category you need to put dollar sign. Okay, put dollar sign before each of this coefficient. And then you drag all the way down. That will give you the fit. Okay, the model fit is going to, now you can see the fit and the cells. You can, let's see, you insert a graph. You, you can select all this data, okay. And then you can see, okay, this is your graph and how it looks like. Okay, this is the graph it looks like, right? Okay, this is the one you estimate. And then you right click and you select data. You can add another series. You wanna add the cells, the cells. And the sales data, in the sales data, you see like all the data here. Okay. And then you click on OK. So that's going to give you the second is called the sales. So you click on OK. So you will see the graph you got here. So now you have the, the two graphs, the, which is the real sales 
and the sales your forecast. Okay, you can see the chart and that exactly the one we got here. So, <clears throat> okay, next we work on the uh, project three and use a target quarterly sales data to create our forecast for the sales. Uh, we're using simple exponential smoothing, simple exponential smoothing model, e, uh, S -E -S model. Okay, so we're gonna do that and report the mean square and the mean absolute percentage square. We're gonna do here. Okay, now we move on to the questions three. <clears throat> okay, so we have the data. Okay, this one, we just copy it and paste back into Excel. Okay, now we do the exponential smoothing. Okay, as simple exponential smoothing data is going to be the first one will be exactly the first one, B2. But the second one I needed to use the alpha, okay, the alpha, which is, remember, so we go back to the, the textbook and going to tell you the exponential smoothing. Okay, exponential smoothing is that, is the estimate data, is the original estimate data, and plus alpha, and minus the difference between this two, right? Difference between these two. Okay, so we're gonna do that. It, make sure the formula you understand is, is this one, the second one, not to the first one, the first one exactly the same. Okay, we choose alpha equal to one. Okay, whenever the alpha changes, that number will change. Okay, is a C2. Okay, C2 is the original one, right? The previous time period data. Okay, remember that is the previous time period of data and the times, the difference times alpha. Okay, now we see this is the difference, which is B2 minus C2. Okay, B2 minus C2, okay, and times alpha. Okay, the alpha is this one. Remember alpha we got here? This is alpha at one. And remember, you need to put dollar sign before F1 to lock that alpha. So when we apply that formula all the way down here, it's not going to change that alpha anymore, okay? Okay, now you, you select the whole column and we can insert a graph and you can see the graph it looks like. Okay, this is, is simple exponential smoothing estimate of the sales, okay? And if you wanted to add that sales, you can add it to it. And then you right click, the select data, and then you add uh, the sales data here. You add, okay, we want to remove that again. So we're gonna do sales and this, the time series value. Okay, the, that's all the sales value we wanted to include. Okay, now you click on OK. Click on OK, check that. Okay, OK. So you can see the two lines. We have uh, the exponential smoothing estimate data and the real size. Okay, so now you calculate the mean square. Okay, the mean square is Okay, it's going to the sum, uh, we're using next the sum x and y2 function. So we can use that function and to calculate the mean square. And also we calculate, we can use the function, it's, uh, it's called the average of that absolute value. It's a maple function and we can use that. Okay, this uh, to calculate the mean square and we have that in our textbook. So we can have that function. Remember to calculate this function on page. <clears throat> we 
okay so on page 189 so this is the function we used and f2 we type this function that's the function we use for that chart for the mean absolute percentage error and the mean absolute error okay now we finished all these three questions have a good day